Okay. <laughs> All right, let me talk to you. Yeah. What's going on, everyone? I hope you guys are doing great today. Update to the Bloodline saga continues. If you're new here, welcome. <laughs> We're just basically talking Bloodline. But I am a big fan of wrestling, but I'm not going to get into it because, like I said, we are here to talk about the Bloodline. This video's update will essentially be quick because it was very straightforward with what happened, but we did get some good insight on where this story could be progressing and obviously if you're keeping up with all these videos there's a playlist of course to follow along with us you'll know that some of the predictions that i'm having is that the rock is the one who's actually this tribal chief and i think we have a little bit more evidence to that with what happened last friday on smackdown oh right hold on one second so this is future me here with a quick update to the video now before you watch the rest of this and think oh man ooch this is so outdated because this happened last friday and we had raw and now more things have happened and now new speculation and theories have since come out what are you doing so here's me from the future telling you to stick around till the end because i will insert what i am currently thinking with this entire bloodline saga and how this all plays in to the king of the ring so this week's bloodline segment starts off in the backstage where we see paul kind of approach this new bloodline in a very timid way he was very scared and he didn't really want to put himself in this uncomfortable position but he kind of had no choice and of course solo is there with tama and tangaloa as tama tanga was getting ready for his match that he was having against uh angelo dawkins of the street profits and solo then essentially quickly met just gets right to it to summarize he was not very happy with paul Heyman lying about speaking with roman number one and also taking roman out of the draft so that prevented the bloodline from not being the first round pick i guess the further down you get picked the worse it looks and solo took that personally and was like oh you're trying to take food away from my kids and everything like that so you know, of course paul was not trying to do that by any means and i don't really think he was thinking that at all because i mean to be honest hey favor not i'm not I, I i don't think that getting drafted lower on in any of the rounds would really hurt i feel like as long as you do get drafted that's the most important part right i don't know so then he mentions to paul that he actually spoke to roman himself and emphasizes that as long as roman's not there that he is now in charge and runs the bloodline and he wants paul to be known as is wise man obviously referring to solo now the key words that i want us to all pay close attention you have to really be zoned in on how solo says this he says the first part of his sentence establishing that he spoke with roman and that as long as he's not there that he is in charge but then he says by the orders of the tribal chief but it doesn't say that roman was the one who did that it wasn't roman that he said that he could do all this and make all these decisions and whatnot. They're leaving this very vague and you have to pay close attention to the in between the lines here. And I'm pretty sure that once Roman comes around, he will confirm that he was not the one that was giving these orders to solo and then that's when the rock will come on but so then the match against angelo dawkins happens and this is actually where tonga loa debuts his theme song which to my surprise i actually thought they were all just going to come out to solo's theme since you know of course we all know that solo's theme is a banger <laughs> And Tama Tonga's song, as it's not like the most craziest of new songs that we've heard, I feel like it's going to take some time to get used to it. I do like it. It's, you know, it has like some good rhythm to it, but you know, I'm not here to judge this man's song right now. I'm here to judge the match. The match was actually pretty okay for what it was worth. It, I thought that it was going to completely squash Angelo Dawkins, but Angelo Dawkins actually got some decent amount of offense and actually looked like for a second he was going to pin him with his finisher. He had like a really close near fall and with some distraction with Solo, of course, he was able to take out Montez Ford with the Samoan spike and then that allowed Tamatanga to hit Angelo with 
his finish. And then after the match, they gave Angelo another Samoan spike. And Paul was like very scared and he was trying to play it off. Like he was like, oh no, like, it, you know, I'm, I'm sticking up the one right now. And that's pretty much it. So from this uh, episode, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we do have some sort of advancement in the story. I am appreciative of the dialogue and the fact that Solo is, is being given screen time to actually talk more. I feel like this is the most he's spoken on main programming ever since they called him up to the bloodline i know that in nxt he did you know cut his own promos and whatnot but like i said since then this is the most that we've ever heard him talk at once and i'm also curious as a side note originally this was supposed to be tamatanga versus bobby lashley but due to injury he actually got taken out and replaced with angelo dawkins i wonder if it literally would have went the exact same way or if they would have had bobby look stronger in this type of defeat but like i mentioned i believe last week that i probably wouldn't have any of these bloodline guys involved in the king of the ring tournament because i feel like whoever tama faces next at some point there's gonna be some sort of dq finish and you know like it's, it's gonna kind of be like pointless like why was he even in this tournament at all so as you probably just heard i was <laughs> really confused as to I don't understand why they decided to put Tamatanga in this tournament when it seems like they're just going to give him some bogus win or DQ finish or something along those lines to kind of devalue or just to further prove why he probably shouldn't be in this King of the Ring tournament. But now after seeing how it seems like Jay on the Raw side of things will essentially be the one that's slated to win the king of the ring what better way than to have jay uso go up against tamatanga to you know give everyone an excuse as to why or how they could literally do a raw versus smackdown situation i know that the draft just happened and i'm sure people are gonna have a nice fit with that one but i mean hey it's wwe it's wrestling it is what it is they make the rules and they will break them at this point in time yes i do firmly believe that Jey Uso will be the King of the Ring winner and in doing so he will end up defeating Tamatanga which will then of course push this bloodline saga even further because who's to say that we actually get more appearances more debuts and more additions to the bloodline and who knows maybe Jimmy might come back to help ensure that Jay wins thus reforming the Usos but I'll do you one better what if Jacob Fatu who which I admit would be somebody that would join the bloodline on solo side actually sides with Jay and Jimmy instead. Now I'll let you hang on that one for a little bit until the next update, but I just wanted to insert this in this video so that way y'all didn't think I was lost and out of date. So that's pretty much it. What did you guys think about this week's edition of the bloodline saga? Let me know your thoughts and your speculation, rumors, comments, whatever down below. And uh, take care of yourselves. May the power protect you. Log right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean, stay the hell inside. And I'll see y'all next time.